Hello everybody, uh, impromptu video this. Uh, I'm going to do a little something here called uh, hairspray weathering. Uh, which is something I've not been aware of myself actually until very recently. But uh, I've started having a go at it and I think actually it's, uh, it's alright. So I've had a little bit of a go on a few bits here as you can see. And uh, I figured as I've got a couple left to do, we'll film it, show you how to go on. And hopefully it's of use to everybody else as well. It's, uh, Great stuff, eh? So uh, I'll show you now what you need to do it, and we'll crack on and uh, show you how to go about whether in the wagons or not using the hairspray technique. Just a second, let's go. Right, so this one is really easy. Uh, you've got uh, sort of any brand of hairspray, obviously water soluble, uh, some paint, a couple of paint brushes, one of them soft, one of them cut short a little bit firm. I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, razor blade optional. Well, that's actually a Stanley blade, but you can use a razor blade if you like. Uh, and a uh, supply of water. A cup of water will do. I'm doing mine here by the sink. So uh, it uh, saves our mess and uh, uh, any sort of spillages and that are, are covered on the draining board. So that's all you need. And I'll show you what we have to do. Okay. First of all, you've got your plain wagons, untreated, untouched. Now these here are a little bit mucky, but it doesn't matter because what we're going to do to them, um, it'll, it'll cover all that up. So straight away, take your hairspray. Uh, you can do this using a, an air, um, airbrush if you like. But I'll just go straight out the can to be honest, I think it's just easier. And we're basically going to give them a wash over with a hairspray. And then you, you're basically doing this, uh, Let's go on the other side a minute, there we go. So we're doing all around like that. Give them a good wash, like that. And we'll leave it on there now to dry. Right, now the hairspray is dried all over the wagons, we're going to paint them. Uh, so for your two brushes, you're going to want the one that's the softer brush. A little bit rough on the end, but it'll do the job. Uh, before anyone else gets worried, looking inside these wagons, that mark and corrosion was there before I started, so don't worry about that. And uh, that there's just a puddle of hairspray that will uh, mop out in the end. Or actually, in terms of just leave it alone over time, it'll probably dry. But uh, externally, they're all dried and set, that's what we need. So, with the paint, I use these little jam jars, because obviously, easy, uh, recyclable, and uh, everything else. Mix the browns and bits in there, like that. And some burnt sienna in the lid. So I can use that texturing over the top. And all I'm going to do is, on one hand, just lather it on. And that's uh, and that's that. I mean, don't be scared with this because it's acrylic paint going on the top of a water-based surface. So it's easy to clean it off. So we're going all over it, a bit like that. There we go. Make a bit of a mess of this, if I'm honest. I'm doing it on the one hand to show you, but hopefully you're getting the idea. And when you've got a layer of that done, we just get a bit of burnt sienna on the go. And I like to just stipple it around where you think there'd be sort of heavier corrosion, so the bottom of doors and round seam lines. You know, places where you see really heavy rust and corrosion on wagons. And uh, once you've got the whole wagon painted, they'll look a bit like that. You know, blue Peter moment that up, wasn't it? So as you can see, lots and lots of paint. Everything's all covered where it needs to be. Plenty of texture on all the surfaces. All ready for the next bit. So here we go. So there they are painted up. Paint's still wet. Need that to dry now for a little bit. You can see a stipple it on, plenty of uh, texture and colour. Blend it all in there, it looks alright. So we go to one we did earlier. We've just seen the dry one. And we've now got to get this to go from looking like this to looking like this. 
which again looks very heavily weathered, very you know, harsh corrosion and everything else. But uh, it's not finished yet, so don't worry, there's still a bit more to do with these to get them uh, complete. But to get from that to that, you need your firm brush. Now, a little bit cut off everything, stubbly end. And all we do is, with your firm brush, take the water and drop it on. I'm just going to uh, tip it on its side a minute to show you. There we go. And I like to work sort of across a side at a time. Just lay it on carefully. There you are. Drop it into all the little bits around. There. Now we leave that water just to dry. And what it's doing is now it's very slowly dissolving part of the uh, hairspray. And loosening a little bit of the paint. So as it dries, you'll see the surface start to crack a little bit and sort of go a bit like uh, eggshell. Uh, and then we'll work some magic with a brush. So it'll be just a minute. So, water's uh, largely dried. A little bit of a lump there, but nothing major. And now the tricky bit. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Right, so what you do, you take your firm brush and uh, you just sort of stroke against the surface and as you can see, it very gently rubs away some of the paint from above with the hairspray. And by just continuously gently working across the surface and then obviously using the razor blade to sort of add a few scratches and mark lines, eventually you work them back to something like that. Which again looks very heavy at this point but we're not done yet. So just give us a second, I'm going to uh, free my hand up and uh, just work this one back a minute for you so you can see how it's going to look. And there you go. That was uh, literally a few seconds just quickly rubbing over with the brush. Clears a few bits back and now we've got some lovely corroded bits of metal left and showing. And uh, flaky bits and everything else there. So we'll let all that dry. And when it is, we'll uh, get to work on finishing them off. So I'm going to leave this one alone now, like I say, just let it dry off and do. And um, we'll continue the demonstration with this wagon here. Uh, there's a couple others I've done as well already. There's a, a grey one. And again, he needs the finishing touches too. So uh, we'll get on with those. And then we'll move on to putting the loading on. So stay tuned, more to come. Right, so we're back on the desk. Uh, I've given this another coat of the hairspray, uh, just to sort of give it another layer for what we're going to do next. Uh, I didn't really need it to uh, hold any of the paint on because it was all well set, but we'll see why in a moment. So instead of using what can be a rather expensive weathering powders you can buy from some of the retailers, manufacturers, I prefer to use these chalk pastels. All you need is a short firm brush, another one of those, and you can just pick the colours you want from it. I like to keep my browns and bits together like that. And then on the wagon itself, you can just sort of gently work it on your layers. Uh, and uh, with a bit of work, it'll tone it right down and hopefully bring everything together. Because, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned, these are all going to be scrap wagons. So they're going to have a load fitted, a scrap. A load of scrap looks like that. Now, before you'll get shocked and uh, surprised, yes, that was a Batman Class 37. And yes, I have cut it up. But for good reason, is that I'd already cut it up because I'd use it as a donor after removing the sound unit and let my friend have it um, to build engine carrier 
which I've uh, I'm not actually shown on this channel yet. So maybe uh, maybe one day soon we'll show you that and see uh, see what I did there. But uh, all these bits here from the scrap box basically. So there's a uh, old bits of bridge panels and white metal parts again just painted with a mix of the the brown paints and little bits and everything else and some white metal castings from bogies and bits that are maybe broken up and you can see when they are taken apart they create sort of all sorts of little wonderful weird bits and that also white metal you can bend it around a bit which is great like that. Uh, bits of plastic just painted right here and just a few sort of general bits and bobs um, you get bits of plastic card like this that are white, they're not very good at all but you can just quick and easily paint them with and uh, when that's cut into the correct size sheets I think that's rather effective that There's bits of old scrap steel and uh, whatever else in the wagon so all that there will make up the scrap loads for these wagons uh, now some of you are probably wondering why have we got the bits of locomotive going in there well the truth of it is uh, I was actually inspired by a photograph I saw on the internet uh, where a broker managed to catch uh, a scrap train formed of a consist of these wagons um, with the remains of a class 40 inside of it and you can actually see the uh, part of the nose and uh, cab windows and that all together uh, laid on its side in the wagon obviously been cut into a couple of three pieces to make it fit I thought that's a rather unusual approach to start I'll do it so there you are so uh, I'll get back to putting some powder on this and we'll see how it looks there we go um, so you can see we're, we're getting there very slowly now I'm going to go back in now with the paints and just touch in a little bit more of the um, the surface rust and bits just pick out a few little bits uh, not that I'm unhappy with, but I'd like to sort of uh, exaggerate, maybe. And even look here at the insides, where in reality I think these doors were actually welded up. So the model not having the lines is great, because I can actually just add a few rust marks and bits internally. And sort of highlight where they would have been or where it was there. And this is working from the prototype photograph. Now, before anyone asks, I'm not going to reproduce that photograph in this video. Purely because I don't own the copyright to it. I can't remember... Uh, the name of the, the gentleman that took the photograph that owns the rights to it at all I don't think it's fair uh, to use it um, so for that reason I'm not, I'm not going to include it here uh, but I'm sure if you if you dig around on the internet uh, you will find it or photograph similar to it so uh, that's why I'm not going to see it in this video but uh, we'll crack on now and uh, get a little bit of paint on this and then we'll see how it looks just a minute, let's uh, see how we go. There you are, just a little bit of extra paint stippled over the top there, just uh, just adds that little bit more sort of depth and everything. It's only very subtle, uh, uh, but that's kind of the idea. It's not meant to be sort of overly obvious and in your face. So it's going to get uh, one last dusty now with a few darker shades, just to bring it all together. And that one then I think is about done. So I'll do that now and then we'll show you the comparison of uh, how it looks compared to the ones that are downstairs. So we're back downstairs and that one there is as near as I'll call it finished. I'm rather happy with that. See so a little bit of um, dark grey and black powder just dusted over the top to sort of finish everything off, tie it all together. Um, very simple effect. Let's turn that around now, so you can see from the insides. A bit rough, but they don't need to be exacting because uh, everything with the load in there, I'll cover most of it. I'm rather happy uh, with that, if I say so myself. Uh, proper rough textured look. Uh, it's got a proper rough texture as well, actually. Um, so I prefer that to the Backman weathered ones, straight away. Uh, you know the, the factory where the ones I should say uh, but yeah so there you go really quick really simple really easy technique for uh, weathering and, and doing your wagons so uh, I've just got a few more now to finish off 
and uh, hopefully you'll see these in an upcoming video if not on this channel then over on uh, emo8765 which is uh, Dave's Tinsley TMD so uh, uh, like that I'll say thanks for watching uh, obviously comments below please tell me what you think about everything you've seen and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you again soon in uh, another update on projects I've got going like uh, that one out there and um, other things going on obviously over on Tinsley so uh, ignore the dog in the background thanks for watching see you all soon bye now